I'll tell you what let's do. Let's all go out and have some fun. I'll take you and Ginny to dinner at Carter's. Well, I'm going to Mark's fraternity dinner, and Ginny and Lester are going to their school dance. Oh, well, uh... I know. Why don't you take Ginny and Lester to dinner before they go to the dance? Yeah, yeah, I may do that. You know, last time we were at Carter's, your mother was with us. It's nothing much in the mail. Just this. Thank you, Your Police department, they're ready to listen to a younger man. Lester, can't you forget about this murder? Ginny has an escape as complex. That's why she escaped last Sunday with the elk's tooth. Ginny, did you find an elk's tooth? Oh, it was nothing. There must be a million elks that belong to the golf club. But you didn't. Anyway, the police aren't interested in elk's teeth. They're interested in how the body got there. I told them that the murderer must have hid the body under the bridge. Then the storm waters came and swept it up towards the culvert. Toward the culvert? Is that what you told them? That's it. Oh, my gosh. I just realized, from the position the body was in, the water, it would have to run uphill to do that. I better call them and tell them. Lester, sit right where you are. Why don't you let the police alone? Lester, Daddy doesn't want to talk about the murder. Come on, it will be late. Now, uh, wait just a minute. I'm going to see you kids at the dance. Oh, but, Daddy, don't be a drip. Lester's been working on his car for two weeks. All the kids are driving together. Sure. Well, I, I guess that's all right, then. But you will be home early. 11.30. All right, and you'll drive straight home from the dance. Of course. It's only two blocks from the house. All right. Well, I'll be waiting for you. Come on, Joan. Have a good time. Thanks for the swell dinner, Mr. Johnson. Yes, that's all right. Lester, I'll catch up with you. Daddy. Yes, dear. Daddy, are you involved with the femme fatale? Certainly not. I hope not. 